Hey, and welcome back. I'm Richard, this is Lap of the World, and uh, I've just finished our first uh, oil change in the NSX following uh, our trip to California and back. Uh, this is going to be a pretty short episode, I think. I just wanted to kind of touch base on some of the wear and tear items. Uh, I say wear and tear. Some of the maintenance items that I've needed to keep up with or keep track of um, after our long road trip. So kind of an update on um, the oil, tires, and brakes mainly. So kind of your, uh, your major consumables, if you will, uh, as well as an update on my, uh, my favorite topic, uh, rear wheel bearings. So, without further ado, we'll, uh, we'll jump right into it. So, first things first, uh, let's talk about oil for a second. Now, typically with the NSX, I keep to a three to 4,000 mile change interval under normal circumstances. Uh, obviously, with the trip to NS Expo, that got stretched a bit uh, to probably closer to 6,000 miles. Um, it was pretty much the last thing I did before we left, so the, the mileage of the trip is pretty much the mileage on the oil. Um, I'm running right now a, uh, the Castrol Edge Full Synthetic High Mileage uh, 10W30 weight as recommended in the uh, original owner's manual for the car. Um, I've had no issues with that and I know, you know not having a problem isn't indicative of necessarily the best solution. Um, at some point I will probably, given the you know, track usage, uh, it would probably behoove me to put a uh, an oil temperature gauge on the car somewhere uh, just to make sure I'm not, uh, you know, nothing crazy is going on there. However, you know, I'm not racing the car. Typically, the sessions I run will be shorter. Um, and again, you know, the motor has 274,000 miles on it on the bottom end, and, I, you know, I see no indication. However... Not seeing any indication is, again, not indicative of there not being a problem, so I've taken the step on this oil change in particular of ordering myself a Blackstone kit, so I will be sending the results of this oil change off for analysis. And through the magic of television or magic of YouTube or whatever we're on here, um, I should, given my production schedule here as far as when this video actually gets uploaded, um, I should be able to have those results at the end of the video that I'll do in voiceover and just speak to those. Um, so stay tuned for that. In the meantime, though, let's change topics and uh, let's look at the tires then because that's been an interesting subject. I know the NSX, you know, if you read through its history, I think it's kind of been, it's one of those things that's been mostly forgotten at this point. Um, but if you look back through old literature, old car magazines and things like that, you'll note that the, the NSX was kind of notorious. The original NSX was kind of notorious for its tire wear, particularly in the rear. Um, that was mainly on account of the factory recommended rear toe settings being very performance biased, um, which meant that there was a significant amount of toe in the rear. Um, and kind of one of those tire wear trivia things. So you're, you know, you see everybody riding around with a lot of camber on their cars these days, sometimes a lot of camber around their cars these days and talk about having, you know, their tires wear out and stuff like that. So you're generally speaking, the camber will dictate which part of your tire wears, but the toe is what actually will dictate how quickly it wears. Because toe is, if you're looking at the car from above, you know, so the car is going this direction and you have your tires this way, toe is this adjustment, right? So, again, looking at the car from above, so we're traveling this direction, you know, camber is going to be this adjustment, toe is going to be this adjustment. And the more of this adjustment you have, the more it's effectively scrubbing as it goes down the road, because you're driving like this, obviously not that exaggerated, but... Uh, that's actually going to dictate how much or how quickly your tires wear um, and can also lead to some other patterns. Now, uh, I'll post my alignment specs up on the screen somewhere. I'll make a scan of them and stick them up there because I've had pretty good success. I took kind of a, a known good baseline for uh, the alignment. I think um, 
It's a slight modification of the factory alignment. I'm pretty sure it was Billy Johnson that posted it on uh, NSX Prime Forum at one point in time. Um, and I've kind of taken that and then run slightly less toe and slightly less camber a couple of places. Uh, you know, because again, I want the performance on the track, but I also do need the tires to last because still the majority of the driving, as hard as I might try, the majority of my driving, given I don't trailer the car, is always going to be highway driving for the most part. Um, and I also did do, um, which, you know, unfortunately this happened before I decided to take the channel seriously, so I didn't really document that process very well, but uh, I did spend some time uh, back early on when I was getting the setup kind of dialed in with a uh, pyrometer measuring the inside, middle, and outside tire temperatures after track sessions. Because ideally, if you get those close to even, you may not get them exactly even because the inside is always kind of going to take a little bit more abuse if you're running a lot of camber um, you know, under braking and such. But if you can get those temperatures close to even across the tread, you know, across the tread section, then you can get yourself to a point where you're actually wearing the tires relatively evenly um, while you're on the track anyway, which is it's obviously where kind of the most intense tire wear happens, if not the most tire wear. Um, but I seem to have been relatively successful at that. Um, I think I see this time some small adjustments that I could make in the front. But uh, let's, uh, let's pause for a moment and we'll take a closer look at the tires. And then we'll, uh, we'll come back and talk about brakes for a second. Okay, so what we have here are the tires from the right side of my car. Um, I decided to look at the right side because Thunder Hill is a track. Um, is probably most abusive to your right side tires. Most of the real intense uh, steady state turns where you're loading and then keeping it loaded for a long time and just relying on the mechanical grip of the tire to get you through the turn, most of those are uh, left-handers. It's all your weight transfers to the right. Um, so let's look here real quick. So here's the rear, and just for reference, that's the inside of the tire. This is the outside of the tire. I say that because I got this, this guy's backwards, uh, so they'll actually stand up for me. But I have my trusty uh, tread depth gauge here. So we'll look, you can tell there's definitely some like right on the focus. So definitely like right on the edge here, you can see there's definitely some pretty intense wear. However, I do have actual tread sipes that go all the way out to the edge. So I've not completely obliterated those but we're down to uh, 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 we're down to like 2 30 seconds there if I'm reading that correctly. And then we have here in the middle or here in the next one. We don't gain much. That's like two and a half or three thirty seconds. The middle one is about the same as that and then we get a little bit better towards the outside here. Um, again, that's pretty close to the same. You have to get out to these outside grooves here before we get up to, sorry, I'm like not paying attention to what I'm filming here, but, you know, before we get to, you know, something closer to 530 seconds for these very outside, uh, outside edges. Now I'm running about, uh, again, I'll post the actual alignment specs, but just to kind of give you the a slow pass here on the actual tread cross section. So these guys probably have, when did I put these on? Probably 267,000 miles, or, or I'm sorry, yeah, 267,000 miles, and we're at uh, 274. So six, you know, six or so thousand miles, maybe six or 7,000 miles at the outside. Um, I have to go back, I can look at my receipts and get a little, so, Six or, six or more thousand miles on this set of rears, which, given that they have three track events, so four total days at the track on them, including that uh, several thousand highway miles, is actually pretty good for a 200 tread wear, pretty hot street tire. Now, the fronts are a little interesting. The fronts, um, I'll have to actually look at what my current... Uh, uh, 
what the current camber number is. Maybe I should go have the alignment rechecked a little bit because these definitely wore more on the outside. Um, you know, certainly nowhere near the wear bar. Here, I'll get this one out here on the very corner. That is, where are we? That's about 430 seconds probably. Whoops. And then getting into the middle, that's about 530 seconds. Inside edge, about 530 seconds. And then you get into the sort of the camera wear zone here. Um, which is more like 430 seconds. Um, and you can tell right here at the very edge, some of these shallower sipes have, uh, have kind of gotten worn all the way down. But if you look at the little, you got the little wear indicator. Refocus here. We got the little wear indicator right here. Yeah, we got some, we got some life left in those fronts still, I think. Um, but again, I need to, I probably need to make them do a little bit more work. I may need to look at doing some, uh, you know, again, potentially some tweaks to how I've got the camber done, or uh, I've had an internal, I've been having a sort of a silent debate about my sway bar setup on the car, but uh, given that I've gone from a uh, quote-unquote, you know, R compound tire to back to a street tire, uh, but yeah, I mean, really, I have no complaints. These things did great on the way to and from California. Um, they are still not noisy. You know, we did... Um, I guess we didn't drive through, we drove through a little spot of rain on the way home. And, uh, you know, in spite of this being definitely, uh, you know, not optimal down to like two or three thirty seconds in a few places, uh, we still did not encounter any kind of, um, I don't think we ever really encountered any real hydroplaning situations. We didn't drive through anything very torrential, but, um, you know, I'd kind of be hesitant to do that at this point with this level of wear, but for, dry weather or just like a damp road, I think they'd be fine. I'd send it. Um, okay. Anyway, that's enough about tires. So let's jump over to brakes real quick. All right. So brakes. Now, as I've discussed in a video before, my philosophy on brake hardware is to get um, good pads and then the cheapest rotors that I can possibly find uh, because they're going to crack and wear out anyway. And uh, you can get them pretty cheap. Um, you know, for the NSX being kind of a quasi super sports car, it's, you know, consumables are actually not that expensive relative to the value of the car. So, you know, that may change in the future depending on parts availability. But for now, I'm able to get, uh, you know, cheap, you know, iron blanks for, what did I get them for this time? Like less than $20 a corner. Um, so if you, in a, if you're, you know, if you own an NSX and you're interested, check out, uh, Summit Racing and Rock Auto um, for the best prices I could find right now. Uh, no affiliation or sponsorship, but just information. Uh, your mileage may vary. Things change all the time. Do your own shopping, etc. Anyway, moving along, uh, I'll put a picture on the screen because I'm not sure how well this is focusing on the rotor, but this one is definitely approaching done. It will quickly go from this to split all the way through. Um... These little specks here, you can hear that. So that's my fingernail catching on those, just to kind of for a reference of how, uh, there we go. Uh, my fingernail catching on those, for reference of how, how not smooth those are. And when they, uh, that's kind of the, you know, some, a you know, rule of thumb I've heard is that once you can catch a fingernail on the cracks, then they're probably about uh, about to be done for, about to crack all the way through. Like if you see any cracks that start creeping over the top edge here, sorry. Um, once they start to turn this corner, then it's definitely uh, replacement time to avoid the risk of one uh, really cracking on you on the track. Now the pads, again. These are the same Hawk HP Plus pads that I put on, I believe, just before going to Dominion. Uh, so they're kind of in the same... They're maybe a little bit newer than the tires, but not much. So that's, you know, again, probably six or seven, you know, 
at the very most, there's 10,000 miles on those, um, you know, all, all included, but uh, a couple track events, and they've still got some, uh, it's probably, I'd say it's a little bit more than half a pad. I doubt I'm going to be able to focus on the little uh, wear indicator down there, but it has not gotten through the, uh, the wear groove yet. There's probably slightly more than half a pad left. I'd totally do a, uh, a single day event on those. Um, well, I mean, I'd sign up for and show up to a two-day event on them, but if I was going to show up to a two-day event on them, I'd bring spare pads, um, not just get home pads. I'd want to bring a spare set of, uh, of legitimate pads. But, uh, so that's the, uh, that's the brakes dealt with, and that's really about all I'm looking at. So, uh, hopefully then I will have some, uh, the next thing you'll be watching is me talking about, uh, oil analysis via voiceover, and we'll go from there. So I nearly forgot. I have one more topic that I wanted to cover, and that is my favorite wheel bearing back here. Uh, driver's rear, and I have worn this thing out now. This is, I think, number, I don't know, seven in seven years probably. Um, typically, I've been getting maybe two or three track events out of a wheel bearing, which, given the rest of the community at large, there are at least enough other people that track their NSXs that... I can talk to that, you know, such that I understand that that's actually not typical. Um, now this time I did change, it has a new hub. Uh, so the wheel hub with the, you know, lug studs in it is new this time. And I had some theory that that could have been maybe the last piece of the puzzle that hadn't been changed um, since this whole debacle started. But, um, Let's give it a shake and see what goes. That is a beautiful thing, folks. That is nice and tight. Uh, that has no give to it whatsoever. Uh, and I can see that my, uh, as I put myself in an awkward pose here, um, I can see that my stake on the uh, axle nut has not moved at all. So that tells me it's still good for the moment, at least. Now, I changed this again right before we left. So it's got 5,700 miles and two days at a track. Granite Thunder Hill, as I kind of talked about with the tires, is mostly a left-handed track. So this is not the most stressed side of the car in that situation. So I think to really call this uh, problem nipped, we're going to have to go somewhere that's mostly... Uh, you know, <laughs> I don't know, maybe I should look for a day at, like, Roebling that is basically uh, all right-handers all the time, forever, and they're all um, relatively high speed with lots of loads, so uh, that would definitely tell us if it was good or not, but uh, probably more on that, uh, hopefully with good news as I keep going, but I will, again, I'll try and keep uh, keep the channel updated with stuff that goes on with the car, uh, in addition to the fun part driving, it's kind of also nice to see the uh, the other end of uh, trying to drive a ton of tracks. Now though, for real this time, on to the oil analysis. And indeed here we have one oil analysis report. Returned to me about a week and a half after I mailed it off. And the oil sample taken from the first oil change that I did after returning from NS Expo in California. That was about a 5,700 mile round trip, which is about the mileage on the oil, maybe a little bit more than that. Uh, and just as a reminder, this was Castrol Full Synthetic 10W30 high mileage. I was also running a Napa Auto Parts sourced Ultra 8 filter made by Nippon. And as you can see here, it's all good news. I'm not getting into a whole lot of detail. I'll leave it on the screen for a little while so you can read it. I'm assuming you have already, or you can just pause the video really. Uh, if you're curious about particular uh, line items. But the overall uh, evaluation was that the motor appears to be healthy based on the oil analysis, which is great news. I think this is actually the first oil analysis that I've done in the car since I've owned it. Um, and the oil itself actually survived intact, and they're saying it had uh, probably some life left in it at that. So that's, uh, I'm, you know, color me impressed with that. I've always kind of, you know, lived and died by the 3,000 mile oil change. And I'll probably honestly continue to do so, but I won't worry so much if I have to uh, fudge it a little bit. 
uh, you know, being away from home or away from somewhere that I can easily do the change within reason, obviously. And that's going to wrap up this post-action physical of sorts on our now 274,700 mile Acura NSX. The tire situation is nominal, new brake rotors are in the mail, I seem to have sustainable oil and filter selections, and the channel has just cleared 300 subscribers. Good news all around. Thanks everyone for watching and subscribing, I really do appreciate it. I'm Richard, this is Lap of the World, and I'll see you all in the next video, if not at the track.